it can be helpful to flag the highest point on a visual. You see here I've got them flag grey and if and make it dynamic as well so that if I you know, click on a particular government authority you see the peaks change. If I pick on a different one you notice that the greys change etc. Okay so you can do this with the DAX formula but visual level calculations are also now able to do this and while they're still in preview feature, and I'm not sure I fully recommend them yet, we can see where it's going and how simple this is compared to doing a DAX formula once they get the visual level calcs UI fixed. I'll show you what I mean. So firstly, to use visual level calcs, you've got to go into File, Options and Settings, Preview Features, and tick Visual Calculations. Okay, it's still a preview feature. And as a preview feature, there's still a few bugs to this, as I'll show you in a second. So, first of all, I just want to add visual level calcs, and I can click on this and go visual calculation. Right, but one thing I did notice is I copied this chart from the other page, and visual level calcs aren't showing. So, there's a weird little glitch there, just for starters. However, check this out. So, new visual calculation. I'm going to go for a custom one. And big shout out to SQL BI who did a blog about conditional formatting using visual level calcs. I'll put a link in the show notes to their blog because again it picks up a few things that otherwise you just you just stuck with this. I'm going to add a little extra spin on on it. Um, so what we're going to do is say right, what's the what's the max value? Okay, just to start with. And you have to use a max x, which is an iterator function, so it goes down every single row, grabbing the max, and at the end it'll fill in whatever the max is. So max x, and then it asks for tables, and maybe unintuitively you have to type rows. Okay, doesn't really make, but it goes down the rows. This is a specific to sort of visual level calcs, and we want to grab the square bracket number of instants. Close the bracket. And here's my first problem with visual level calcs, is when I press enter, the formula disappears, which I don't like. Okay, the formula should stay there and this column should be highlighted. Um, all right, so that's the first point, 361, which is, as you can see, or as you can see above, my max. But I want, then want to wrap it in if to say, look, if the value is the max, say true. Um, so I need to edit this. Annoyingly, there's no way here. You have to come over to the side and click on the Edit Pencil. And then your formula pops back up. Okay. So then we're going to say, maybe call it flag max value. And we can say if square bracket number of instants equals this, then one, close the bracket, enter. So there we can see that February has got a little one against it. And again, my formula's disappeared. So I want to go back here, click on this, and say, right, rather than a one, I actually want to return a hex code, like a color code, that I can use for my conditional formatting. So I can put in a uh, hashtag, and I happen to know this code, but I also use color picker. So Windows Shift C, I did a video on color picker, to go and pick a particular color. Maybe I'll go and grab this little color here. Okay, and I'll paste it in here. And press enter. And now I could use that color in my conditional formatting. So I go across here, I go down to the column section, and it's not showing me the FX, so I have to hide this, I don't want it showing up anyway, so I hide it. And you go to the FX, and you go, I want it to be a field value, and I want to base it on flag max value. And, oh, OK is grayed out. Don't. Right, apparently, and thanks to the SQL BI guys for this one, I have to go to Properties, Data Format, 
and change my flag max value rather than the default decimal to text. Okay, and now when I go back to the visual and down to color, FX, it should now work. And there we go. We've got the new color. Notice how the old color is, has changed. Um, maybe, so what I could do then is go back into the formula and say, look, it, it could be that color, but otherwise I want it to be hash. Paste that in. Oops, that's not a hash. And there we go. Pretty good. And you can just go back to your report. And then I can just click on the different things and you can see that the blue bar moves to wherever it needs to move to. What I'd actually like to do is reference, okay, a particular color here that's gonna be my sort of global highlight color. This is my gray, this is this gray here. Okay, so I go back in to my conditional formatting and go back into my um, visual calc. Mm, how? Okay, so this is my next little bugbear with visual calcs. You have to currently go three dots, new visual calc, and then you just got to do a custom, create a new one. And that then brings this little list up on the side. You just delete the new one and then you can click edit. Eh, not a great experience. Okay, so what I want to say is, right, if it's true, I want to refer to this one called CF Color Highlight. So I go to press square bracket, but visual calcs can only refer to things that are in the visual. And because CF Color Highlight isn't in the visual, I can't refer to it. Hmm, okay, let me escape out of this. So what do I do? Well, I'm going to add this to my visual. But where? I'm going to add it to the tooltip and I'm going to hide it. So it's never going to show up. But it's now in this visual available to me. So that I can then go back to my um, other one here, the flag. Okay, I can go in here. And I can now refer to square bracket CF color highlight. Close the bracket, press enter, and now it's referring to gray. And again, I can change that base color. I can refer to another base color in there. So that's that's a sort of um, approach. Now there is, I think, I think maybe one more challenge here. When I did this the other day, when I come back to have a look at, at what conditional formatting has been applied. So I come down to my color and I click on the FX. This is empty, it's gone. I have no idea what is being used for that conditional formatting. I can click the drop down and see it's like flag, I can remember it's flag max value. But again, it's now not available so I then go back up to properties and this has gone back to decimal number and text. Um, so then if I go back into my visual and go back to my FX, flag max value is now showing. So it's a bit weird. There's some quirks in play here. Let me just try this. If I copy this and paste it on another page, three dots. Ah, no, visual calc is then in there. I don't know what happened with that other one. But yeah, that's a way of making and flagging your max column and linking it to a master color. Now the nice thing about setting up this master color measure is if I decide to use a different color, again, if I pick color picker to go and get maybe this yellow or orange, okay, I can simply 
double click in there, pick that colour, press enter, and throughout my report, all my colours should now be highlighted the same. So let me know what you think. You know, the long way of doing this, what is, and, and as you've seen, it's not really the long way because there's a few glitches with um, the visual calcs, is in, for this one, the way I built it without visual calcs was this. I just went FX, refer to a field value called CF rule number of monthly incidents, which is this one up here. And then this was my measure. Okay, I've just had to put, it's a bit longer, calculate max X all because you've got to include your sort number as well as your month. And then a little if statement. So it's a longer formula. It would be nice if the visual level calcs was just a little bit cleaner, but there's definite potential there. All right, hope you find that useful. Start playing around, it's still preview. Mm, not sure I'd trust it in a main report currently. I think I'd still stick with this approach, but let me know what you think. All right, stay tuned, Stay check out the comments. If, if you're watching this video, you know, this is the end of March I'm recording this. If you're watching this a few months later, check out the comments or some the description because there may well have been updates. It may well be much more robust now and I'll add corrections as we go. All right, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video. Before you go, check out one of my other videos or playlists and click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.